As we all know, Julian Assange has been arrested, taken out of the Ecuadorian embassy and is now in British custody. To talk about this, we have Renata Avila, a very well-known lawyer and a civil rights activist in Latin America and actually a digital rights activist for the entire world. Renata, bad day for the world and its and freedom, particularly freedom of press, because the intergovernmental body had already given a directive to the Ecuadorian government that Julian cannot be arrested without a proper legal process. He cannot be extradited, cannot be handed over to the British government in this way. The Ecuadorian government has really disregarded that advisory and also what the world opinion was saying about this. Well, basically, uh, the Ecuadorian government, it went, went even beyond this. The Ecuadorian government completely ignored uh, its obligations under international law. And uh, it, it was brutal. It was uh, an act, uh, it was a political persecution act. It is just one in this chain of uh, political persecution that, he, that the government has uh, been uh, using as its foreign policy since Lenin uh, Moreno took power. Um, but you have to understand here, there's the small actor, Ecuador, and the big actors, the big dogs. And the big dogs uh, are the U.S. government and the U.K. government. And um, it, is, it is a terrible day for Western democracies because, uh, you know, uh, I come from Latin America and asylum was an institution that we shaped in the region, that we shaped in the region to assist dissidents, to assist uh, even politicians, you know, that were so, suffering political persecution. And no, it, it's the first time. Uh, that an, uh, a Latin American embassy opens the doors to an empire to sacrifice a political uh, a political prisoner. It is outrageous. Was it because of the IMF loan that Ecuador is seeking, or is it also the fact that some information has come out about Moreno's family and their involvement in some offshore account, which WikiLeaks also carried? I think that it was a sealed deal since long time ago, as, as WikiLeaks warned it, uh, at its moment. It is, it is uh, the usual way the Banana Republic, the Ecuador Act, uh, U.S. snaps and they jump. And that's what the, sometimes, even uh, without in exchange of nothing, uh, you see how the U.S. treats Latin Americans. I mean, uh, less than animals. That's the way that we are described in, in the U.S. And in spite of that, this president uh, fearing, you know, fearing, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, he has a lot to fear. Well, I think he has a lot to fear uh, because of the, the systematic corruption of his family. And that's why the, the way that he reacted. But I don't want to focus that long on Ecuador. In the, the, in the Ecuadorian because it's a, it's a small it's, country in the face of a very large empire. And in that sense, we have to congratulate at least what the previous government did. And it was oh, a very yeah. brave of Korea, President Korea, and then the Ecuadorian government who stood up to the empire. Well, my only hope is that Rafael Correa will be back in power in Ecuador and will fix things and will and will uh, give these people a lesson. Because uh, it is it is not the way that we hope Latin America will be in the future. Uh, but it is, uh, it is part of a, of a regional crackdown on the left, basically. Renata, you are also a lawyer who's been fighting for civil rights on various issues. What do you think the legal course would be in England now, in the UK? Well, uh, uh, there's a high chance uh, that we will win the extradition case in the UK. Julian has the most capable team of lawyers, and Julian has the reason on his side. It is crystal clear that this is a political persecution. There's no space for doubt. It has nothing to do with, uh, with uh, uh, protecting the public interest, but protecting the people uh, uh, from uh, closing the eyes of people so they cannot see the abuses of, of their government. That's what this case is about. And, and uh, there's a, a good recent precedence, like a Laurie Love case in the UK, where the UK refused to extradite him to the US. And uh, I think that the two important points here that we need to keep uh, while uh, describing the situation is number one, it is political. Number two, he, uh, Julian is not a hacker. 
the act of uh, the situation described in the charges uh, finally uh, released, finally disclosed by the U.S. Justice Department. Uh, they try really hard to change the narrative and to drive the narrative by describing him as a hacker, uh, as a two hackers conspiring to, to do bad things inside the U.S. government systems. The situation that is described in that uh, document is of a source talking to a journalist, as any source and any journalist in all over the world talk at any time. By uh, criminalizing and, and using the wrong words to describe uh, these people in their, uh, while they were exercising the right to seek and receive information, a universally protected right, uh, we, we uh, helped the U.S. narrative to criminalize uh, the act of public. But if we accept this argument wa that Washington Post should have been charged under criminal law, uh, as a newspaper for publishing Pentagon Papers. It's no different. Except they say it's a digital platform, we will not extend all these rights. And that's the important part, because together with uh, killing uh, freedom of expression, they want to kill all uh, the space for uh, journalistic innovation. I was reading the charges, and in some part, they, they, they pay spe sp special attention to the Dropbox. Okay. And you know that, that these Dropbox are saving people's lives all over the world because uh, many newsrooms have adopted the WikiLeaks standard. The WikiLeaks standard is that you will do as much as possible of not knowing the identity of your source and keeping the source anonymous. And that's part of the uh, brilliant technical advance that WikiLeaks brought to the journalistic world. And the U.S. is targeting that specifically. So, Lady, last words you have for the global community, how we should react to this, particularly the new, what shall I say, the digital media, whose actually freedom is at stake. Because if this is accepted against WikiLeaks, we are all then not protected under anything that the press is accustomed to being, which is that we have a right, if a whistleblower comes to us, to put the document in public domain. We are at, at a crossroads. We are really in a, in a defining moment, and this moment should be defined by principles and courage. That's, uh, that's uh, my point of view for the, for the international community. I will say this is jeopardizing the right to know of the people outside the U.S. and outside the Western world. If we have unequal right to know, and if any person trying to elevate that right to exercise that right for us, because that, that, that's the crime. Uh, the crime of, of Julian Assange is that he's uh, not, not American and that he has opened up. He's a truly international journalist. Uh, his internationalism has been so powerful that he, without making a profit, without be, being like a, uh, elevated as many gurus get elevated when they create an app to make us slaves of our devices. He did the opposite. He created a public interest technology and then he innovated so much in journalism and opened up the ability for anyone anywhere in the world without paying a cent, without being tracked, uh, to know about the, the, the precisely the, the kind of documents that uh, those in power do not want to know uh, us to know, and they do not want us to know because if we know what is really going on behind closed doors, we will get really upset. And we are very upset now because we know that uh, uh, this uh, constant uh, censoring and restriction in access to information to all of us is what is keeping us with the uh, uh, with the hands tied, and it's time to stop it. The battle for the freedom of Julian Assange is the battle of freedom as well. Thank you, Renata, for being with us. The real crime of real crime of Julian Assange is speaking truth to power, the fundamental task of yes. all media. Thank yes. you very and much, Renata. Keep, yeah, one more thing: we need to keep with a good spirit. Uh, we need to smile, we need to enjoy. Like yesterday when he was taken to the police, he was, you know, doing this. That's Julian, and that should be us. Let's not be in despair, let's not be sad, and let's uh, take this to the next level. We are going to win because we are right. Thank you for those inspiring words. Thank you for being with us, Renata. Thank you, Praveer.